Welcome to the Transform Sales Podcast, where forward-thinking business leaders come to share their experiences and ideas, learn from each other, and amplify their results together. Welcome to the Transform Sales Podcast Sales Software Review Series. The Sales Software Review Series is a fun tech show all about software to help you sell better. Today, we have Ryan Johnson, Chief Product Officer at CallRail on, who's going to be giving us a demo answering a couple questions, and making it a fun show for you to watch. Ryan, first question. Who are you? (laughs) Uh, Hey, Jalen. So thanks for having me on the show. So as you said, um, I'm Ryan Johnson, uh, Chief Prog Officer at CallRail. I've been here about six years and uh, spent most of my career in tech. I started in uh, finance, made my way to tech, and predominantly been leading product and engineering teams in the MarTech space and uh, and really love it. I have a passion for real, uh, you know, actually solving real world problems with uh, uh, with software and, um, and, and being able to turn those into action. And on a personal level, I live in Atlanta. I have two wonderful daughters and I'm an avid auto racing uh, fan. Nice, nice. So like, How'd we get to call rail? What is call rail? <laughs> just, just for the audience here. <laughs> well, it's not a rail. It has nothing new trains. Let's just uh, get that out of the way. Um, so uh, real quickly, I made my way to call rail. A bunch of us worked together previously at another um, uh, tech startup that, subs- uh, that got acquired by Oracle many years ago. So it's always nice to c- I come back and with people you enjoyed working with before. And so CallRail is, uh, in its most simplistic uh, way to explain it, is an AI-powered um, lead intelligence platform. And we predominantly focus on businesses that rely on call, since the name uh, CallRail, for um, their primary you know, lead source of uh, inbound, both inbound leads and outbound leads. Um, and the problem that we're trying to solve is really, uh, as soon as someone picks up the phone, like, how did they find you? How did they find that phone number? Why are they calling you? Um, And so that was the problem we were trying to solve almost 10 years ago, even before my time. Um, And there were products that existed in the market, but they were primarily focused, very upmarket enterprise um, and uh, expensive to set up, um, not as user-friendly, you know, no self-service kind of white glove. And so CallRail... Uh, was designed to really change that and be available for all different types of customers. Mm. So like with that said, you know, if we're going to talk about customers. What sorts of buyers are you serving best? What sorts of customers have you seen uh, are the best for call rail? Sure. So we primarily focus on small and medium businesses, but we also kind of go across the gambit of, uh, different verticals. So we um, work uh, in healthcare. So you can think of doctors and dentists and uh, care clinics and those types of things. Automotive. It could be automotive repair shops. Could be uh, dealerships. Uh, home services is a really big vertical. So you can think of anything of like building a full uh, home and and that type of stuff to. Um, you know, termite inspections and landscaping and and all those types of things. Uh, law firms and legal is also a big uh, vertical for us as customers. And so uh, we service almost 200,000 uh, SMBs out there. Um, but we also uh, really focus in, on the agencies that help them as well, too. So agencies are kind of that like one to many uh, aspect that are supporting these um, SMBs. So it's very, very broad, uh, which is fun. Um, you have all different types of users and sophistication and an experience with with marketing and, and sales tools out there. And so, um, you know, our goal in life is to help everybody market with confidence and be able to turn those leads into better customers, um, regardless of kind of what uh, what vertical you're in. Now, of course, if you don't use the phone, uh, pretty hard to help uh, based on, on what we're focused on. Uh, but any business that, you know, relies on inbound kind of communication could be phone calls, text messages, um, form submissions, chat, those types of things as well. 
Fantastic. I mean, fortunately for your business, there's a lot of businesses that rely on those things, right? A lot. Of, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with that said, you know, Call Rail's been around for a little bit. Um, so what does Call Rail help people do that they couldn't do before? I know you kind of went into it uh, a little bit there, but could you just like clarify it? Sure. So I'll start from the beginning where the first problem we are really trying to solve is attributing all this marketing spend to these leads that were driven by phone calls. And for many years, this was kind of a black box. Um, and uh, that was the initial goal of, of CallRail. And it was so enterprise focused, expensive, like I said, hard to set up. Um, and CallRail kind of came in and said, hey, we want to make this affordable, easy to set up. Um, and be able to provide this intelligence that hasn't uh, happened before. So really, uh, this is like the impetus of call tracking and uh, attribution. Uh, So in its simplest form, uh, what they couldn't do before is if you see a phone number on the side of a, 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 a pickup truck for service or a billboard being able to attribute back to um, whatever uh, being able to attribute to, the truck or the billboard that, hey, this is where those leads are coming from, to very sophisticated things, which we call um, dynamic number insertion, where we're actually, uh, for digital marketers, where they're sending a lot of traffic to a website, um, we're basically making it so that every user that hits that website, um, the the marketer and and the, the, the sales organization can understand like, oh, Jalen and Ryan were both looking for a dentist. They both found the same dentist. Jalen found it on Google. I found it on Facebook. And when we come to the same landing page, we actually see two different phone numbers. Um, And the reason for that is, is that way it can attribute, oh, Jalen came from Google. Ryan came from Facebook. Here's his digital journey. And we can attribute uh, from there. And so uh, for many years, this, this wasn't, available um, to the masses. And so it was really solving that black box of attribution. Um, And then evolving over time is really, you know, looking at the other channels I mentioned. So if someone starts, you know, texting or they submit a form or they uh, come through chat and those types of things, being able to tie that digital journey to the individual. And then I would say finally is, What's really important and the most exciting is that um, we're really focused on like the intelligence that lies within that conversation. And I think that's kind of like the fast forward to today uh, that's really powered by AI, which, you know, honestly, we couldn't do some of these things even, you know, a year ago, which is really being able to analyze what's happening during the phone call, um, what's the sentiment of the phone call. Um, what questions were being asked? How did the agent perform? Uh, was an appointment set? And really all this intelligence that's unlocked now um, that, um, you know, that really hasn't been out there, uh, at, at least in um, what we would say, um, you know, great accuracy or precision uh, that has really come to fruition in, you know, the last 12 months because of the the big advances in AI that we've been able to take advantage of. Yeah, I mean, it happened so fast, right? And so fast. You know, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, you're you're like many companies that are capitalizing on on that innovation, you know, in real time. So you stand up to date, even though you've been around for a while. It's great to hear. So with that said, you know, how would someone measure their success with CallRail? Like, if I were to be a customer of CallRail, I'm making cold calls every day. I got billboards out there, <laughs> you know, I got, I have Google ads and Facebook ads. How would, how would I be able to measure whether or not call rail is worth the investment? Sure. So I think one is, you know, at, at the highest level, um, you know, do you feel that you're marketing with more confidence, right? You're spending money in all these channels after using call rail. Do you feel Uh, more confident that these channels are actually effective to the leads that you want. Um, And so that's kind of like foundationally, you know, is Google performing better than Facebook or whatever it may be? Um, So foundationally, are you, do you have better visibility into the best channels for those leads? And then 
I think, you know, secondarily are like, are you confident in actually training those leads into better customers? So um, you're confident that they're sending the best leads, but what things are happening during these conversations that can help you turn um, these leads into better customers? And so um, it's really about, you know, visibility and insights that you didn't have before. It's that aha moment of, hey, I didn't realize that every time an agent of mine is talking to a customer, they mention these services this way, uh, and I want them to do it this way, or we market this way, but they talk about it this way. And so I think it's, you know, two big buckets are, do you feel that you're optimizing your leads in the best way possible and getting that return on investment? And are you converting more of those leads into customers? And obviously the the, the lagging indicator of that is, uh, you know, both your your marketing spend up the optimization and then the, you know, new revenue that you're uh, pulling in at the end of the day. All right. Makes sense. So with that said, you know, let's check this out. Let's check out this platform. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. All right. And Jalen... Feel free to ask me any questions about this. I could probably spend all day giving a demo of call rail, uh, but I'm going to try to keep it to, um, you know, extracting the most value out of the platform that you can. So what you see here is if you log into call rail today, um, you're all set up. Let's say you're actively um, tracking your marketing campaigns through a few different sources. So you come in here and you see, um, a nice, elegant dashboard of like what's really happening um, today in my business. And so you can he see here in the left hand corner, um, it's looking at your total call. So like, let's start very high level aggregate. How many calls do you have today? Um, how many calls do you have over the last seven days? And then what is the percentage um, difference between that? Are you getting more calls? Or are you getting less calls, et cetera? The second thing that you'll see next to it is first time caller. So here you see 26, it's 160% uh, increase looking at uh, the past seven days. So first time callers are usually uh, really important to our customer base because they're probably first time or new customers that they want to, um, to be able to bring in. Uh, if we go a little bit down, uh, we have calls by number. And so this is kind of where we start digging into the uh, sources. So you can see here in this example, um, you know, we have a website pool. So this is the numbers that live on your website to track. Um, you have Google My Business. So if you think, you know, you go to Google, you search on maybe Google Maps, you see those business listings, it's Google My Business. You may have another website. So you may have multiple properties. So that's what you see here in the center. Um, and then Facebook ads, and then another Google My Business. The pie chart over to the right, this is just splitting out uh, the attributions by source. So uh, how many are you, um, what percentage of your calls are coming from Google ads? What percentage of your calls are coming from, you know, other sources? What are just direct to your main line, uh, et cetera. So it's meant to give a really high level. And then finally, uh, below here, this is a little bit more like tactical day to day. This could be your your sales or marketing team, really looking at um, the team's activity. So over here on the left, this is the recent activity. These are phone calls uh, that have happened today. There may be a phone call that's actually happening now. Uh, in the center here, we have um, the number of calls today. And we're looking at you know what percentage were outbound calls, what percentage were actually answered, what percentage were missed, what were abandoned, and how many went to voicemail. Again, all like high level, really important metrics um, when, uh, when, when you really rely on the phone. And then finally over here, um, you can look at day and time of like unanswered calls, uh, versus answer calls. So answerability rate is a big thing as we know in business, um, consumers will just move on to the very next person. Uh, if they don't, Absolutely. You know, <laughs> if they don't, as soon as they pick up the phone, it's that simple. Sometimes it's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of wild. And so this is like to give you that high level dashboard to think about those things. Um, so from here, what we can do is we can actually start to dive a little bit deeper and say, OK, what is actually happening on these phone calls? Um, and how can I use this intelligence to either, you know, optimize my marketing spend or convert these into um, to customers? 
And so I'll start with total calls. We'll go into um, reviewing activity. And in this example, this is actually for like an automotive um, um, demo. So you'll kind of see uh, Naples, uh, Kia and Portland Honda, uh, all, you know, made up data for a demo purpose. But, uh, if you think about this through the lens of, you know, an auto dealership, um, and from the, the lens of, of marketing for that and in sales as well. So what you can see here is like a trend of calls over time. So you look at it over the week and then you can look at basically one at a time, um, the calls that are coming into your business. So, where did they go? So you may have multiple locations. In this sense, we have a location in Portland. We have a location in Naples. Um, where did it come from? Okay, great. It's a Google My Business ad. Um, what is the source? When did it start? What's the duration? Uh, Who is the contact? Um, you know, what city did they come in? And uh, on and on. It also uh, can tell you, okay, this was the agent's line that came in. Um, and if they did something where, uh, for, you know, whether it was advertising on Google or Bing or something like that, the keywords, those types of things would pull in to say like, oh, these keywords are resonating for this property. But if I want to double click into this, and hopefully this doesn't play, we'll actually start playing the recording of the phone call. Um, what you can see here, and this is where we get into the real deep intelligence that I was talking about, um, and it's actually a part of the, the platform called Conf Conversation Intelligence. This is the AI powered, um, uh, really like piece of the platform that is very, very focused on what is happening during that phone call and how can we uh, optimize um, both, uh, you know, marketing spend and the, the conversion of that. So we'll start over here. So we know that, okay, Mary Johnson called. Uh, you can see a timeline of the conversation. We've been able to determine the sentiment. So it was a fairly positive call. So this is a great thing if someone's calling in, especially to a, a dealership. You know, uh, step one, okay, great. Positive phone call happens. Um, over here, you can actually see a summary of the discussion. Uh, so this is a, uh, it could be a phone call that was, you know, two minutes to two hours and our system will output a three to five sentence summary of actually what happened on the phone call. Um, so what's interesting about this, a caller uh, came in. So Mary Johnson called in about a cashback promotion on an SUV um, and wanted to know what that was. Uh, the sales rep said it was $2,500 for that model. They discussed financing and the limited time offer with that. Uh, the caller said they will visit the dealership this weekend to learn more about qualifying for the cashback. Great. Um, and you can see normally you have this longer kind of uh, a conversation happening. So it's summarizing the whole um, transcription. And then if we get into some of the more advanced analysis, um, and this is part of our call rail labs is, okay, let's dive deeper into what happened in that conversation. So I'm going to give you a quick preview. This is some of the latest and greatest things that have literally launched within, you know, the past couple months. Um, and so one, uh, one of these is like, what else can we learn about the caller details? So I'm going to click on generating this. Um, and in this case, there's like no additional details that make this interesting about um, the user. It's going to ask like, was an appointment actually scheduled during the phone call? And in this case, it was no. The person actually said they were going to visit the dealership later this week. And as we know in sales, like, hey, the, maybe your sales rep should have put something on the books. Um, not that the person was just going to come in during the week and check out the plan, but like, hey, we have a specific day and time for you to come in. Um, we can look at call coaching. So um, what could the the agent have done better on this? And so uh, it's both positive. And so we look at both sides of it. So one is, okay, what did the agent do really well on the phone call? In this case, they were very polite, friendly, helpful, Hence the initial sentiment uh, of being positive there. Provide clear, detailed information about the cashback offer when asked, um, and then successfully address the customers and concerns. Um, you know, areas to improve. You know, emphasize the limited time promotion to incur encourage quicker action from the customer. So again, kind of relating back to maybe setting up that appointment. 
um, you know, uh, when the customer asks about terms and conditions, like maybe mentioning some of the explicit things, um, and then really thinking for their time. So in this case, overall, you know, did a good job representing the company for the offer, but some tweaks that, um, that salesperson could do going forward. And then the last two that I'll look at are, um, you know, questions asked. So, uh, real quickly, if you just want to go in and say, what happened during this phone call? Like what did Mary Johnson ask? Um, she wanted to know about the summer cashback special. She wanted to know about specific models that were available for that offer. She was interested in the SUV, a specific SUV model and what the cashback offer was for that. And then any other terms and conditions that she should be aware of. So again, as an end user, you could come in here and, you know, you may, based on your business, really understand, hey, the questions that they asked during this are really important to me. I don't need to go through some of those other things. Um, and then finally, you know, is this a new or existing customer? Um, obviously, in this case, um, you know, this is a new phone call coming in um, and uh, it, it, it's detected that like, hey, this is actually a new customer. Um, and again, all this data can be, you know, hooked into CRMs and, and pushed out, uh, based on the implementation that you have. And so that's like a really quick view of the types of intelligence that you can get from what happened on that phone call. I can double click into the, the transcription itself. There's other pieces that will actually pull out as well to keyword spotting, those types of things. I would say this is some of our, you know, early AI things before the last 12 months, um, but still valuable. So it's very, very flexible um, as far as what data you want to get. And then getting into the classification, uh, some of this can be automated and some of this can actually, um, the, the, the agent or somebody else in the organization can classify these calls uh, both in... Um, you know, programmatically. So being able to tag calls based on some of that intelligence that went on through automation rules or actually going through the call itself um, and, uh, you know, qualifying it and those types of things. So in this case, you know, you can see here uh, the the keywords that kind of came up were about, you know, the 2023 model, the promotion that was running. Um, that was the what the agent talked about. The customer was interested in deals. This was a qualified lead. Um, and in this case, it was qualified based on automatically. So based on some of that information we saw. Um, and then, you know, you can add different types of tags to this. And so in this example, um, you could say, obviously, this was a sales um, department uh, call. This wasn't service. OK, so we don't need service finance. We're not there yet to financing. Um and this was a qualified lead. And in this case, it looks like they had a 0% financing direct mailer out there as well, too. It seems like you have a scenario where it's this is great for, you know, people who are talking on the phone, right? So, like, you, you're able to give it's great for managers, for sure, to, like, help Absolutely. coach their team. And it also it takes a lot of the, the weight off of a manager's shoulder. <laughs> you know about like actually going through listening to the call seeing where somebody could improve and so with that said uh i could see how it's valuable especially in a in a in it this example with a uh a car dealership so like what was something like this cost um Sure. So it really varies, right? Um, and that's what's um, been nice about CallRail because it was focused on SMBs in the beginning. I mean, we have pricing and packaging that start at $45 a month. It's a 14-day free trial um, and um, and you can cancel anytime. There's no commitment. So it has included um, usage in there and numbers to be able to do all your tracking um, and then it goes up from there. If you use conversation intelligence, uh, again, that ranges from 45 to $90. There's usage components in there. Um, and so it really depends on like the volume that your, um, that your company experiences. You can imagine the example of a, um, of a car dealership, their, their volume of phone calls may be in the tens of thousands per month, um, versus a, 
um, you know, a, um, you know, home services company that, that maybe gets a couple hundred a month. Um, and so we have that flexible pricing based on your usage and volume. And then some of your particular needs, like if you, as part of your inbound, if you get forms, um, or you want chat on your website, those can be added on those types of things. And then also integrations, um, are really important. So there's like base integrations that are included in this. So you want to take this valuable data in aggregate and you want to send it back to Google to optimize your ads, or you want to put it into HubSpot or Salesforce or whatever CRM that you use. Um, there's, there's kind of, there's base integrations and then there's, um, add on integrations as well too. So very flexible pricing, um, and really determined based on your volume, but it's easy and and affordable to get started. And we see a lot of people kind of start, could be with like, hey, I just want to track my Google ads and see how that goes and and kind of grow from there. Fantastic. I mean, it sounds like uh, you guys will have some amazing customer support on the back end there because you would be able to communicate uh, prospects or in your case, uh, client issues like beforehand. Or, or their needs beforehand, so you can tailor your pricing to their uh, particular business model. And you know, with that said, if you are a company, car dealership, you're, you're, uh, what, what are some more examples? <laughs> yeah, it's a doctor's office. So you know, you're the the dentist. You're, um, you know, primary health care provider. Uh, if you're a real estate agent, obviously you get a lot of phone calls. Especially if, if you're a real estate agent. <laughs> Especially if you're a real estate agent. You should be um, watching this. Uh, check out Call Rail. Um, and where can we find you, Ryan? Sure. So you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter. Um, and um, and yeah, I, if you have any questions or want to talk shop, um, you know, hit me up on either of those. All right. Well, with that said, that concludes today's uh, sales software review platform re- review. <laughs> and yeah, it's great to meet you, Ryan. Great to have you on. And anyone watching this, you know where to find Ryan. Check him out on LinkedIn. Check him out on Twitter. Ryan, Chief Product Officer at Call Rail. And as always, have a great day. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jalen. This is a lot of fun.